Lesson 5.3, Estimate Decimal Quotients. We can estimate decimal quotients by using compatible numbers. Compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to calculate mentally. That's mental math. When choosing compatible numbers, we need to look at the whole number part of the decimal dividend. So remember, this is the dividend. This is the divisor. It's what we're dividing the dividend by, and the answer is the quotient. If the whole number part of the decimal is less than the divisor, we need to rename the decimal dividend as tenths or hundredths first, then find the compatible numbers. We have 3 and 7 tenths divided by 4. This 3 whole number is less than that divisor 4. We need to rename it as 37 tenths. We think 37 tenths divided by 4. The compatible number would be 36. 36 divided by 4 is equal to 9, so 36 tenths divided by 4 is equal to 9 tenths, or we can write it as 9 tenths. We just think 4 times 9 equals 36, or 36 divided by 4 equals 9. To estimate using compatible numbers, we can think of basic facts that are close to the actual numbers. We have 2 and 5 tenths divided by 6. We think 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4, so 24 tenths divided by 6 is equal to 4 tenths. That means 2 and 5 tenths divided by 6 is approximately 4 tenths. So remember that this sign, it's called a double tilde, it means approximately. So 25 tenths divided by 6 is approximately 4 tenths. We need to estimate 4 and 1 tenth divided by 8. We see that this whole number 4 is less than the 8. We think 4 and 1 tenth is equal to 41 tenths. And 41 tenths is close to 40 tenths. We can think 40 divided by 8 equals 5. So 40 tenths divided by 8 is equal to 5 tenths. So we can say that 4 and 1 tenth divided by 8 is approximately 5 tenths. When we estimate quotients with compatible numbers, the numbers we use for the dividend can be greater than the actual dividend or less than the actual dividend. We have, we have 4 and 1 tenth divided by 7. We think 42 divided by 7 equals 6. We can use 42 tenths divided by 7 will equal 6 tenths. So that means 4 and 1 tenth divided by 7 is approximately 6 tenths. And this 42 tenths is greater than 41 tenths. So this estimate is greater than the actual amount. If we have 4 and 3 tenths divided by 7 tenths, we could still use 42 tenths divided by 7 equals 6 tenths. 42 tenths is less than 43 tenths. So our estimate of 6 tenths will be less than the actual amount. We need to estimate $231.28 divided by 42. And we think we can remove the cents and use a dollar amount that's compatible with 40. We round this 42 to 40. Using a whole number greater than the dividend, we can use $240. It's greater than 231, because we think 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6, so $240 divided by 40 is $6. And this $240 is greater than the actual dividend, so the quotient will be greater than the actual quotient. Using a whole number less than the dividend, using 200 instead of 231, this is less, we have $200 divided by $40, that's equal to $5. And because this $200 is less than the actual dividend, the quotient will be less than the actual quotient. And the actual quotient is between $5 and $6, but closer to $6 because $231.28 is closer to $240 than $200. So $240 divided by 40 is a better compatible number. So remember, 
when the whole number of the dividend is less than the divisor, six is less than nine, we rename the dividend as tenths or hundredths first. We can rename this as 623 hundredths and then think of dividing it by nine. We can round it to 60, 630 hundredths because we think 63 divided by nine is equal to seven. So 630 divided by nine would be equal to 70. So 630 hundredths divided by nine is equal to 70 hundredths or we can write it like this and we can remove the trailing zero and just write seven tenths, right? We learned that back in video 3.4. When we need an exact answer, an estimate may not be appropriate, but it will help us to know our quotient is reasonable. Bob has a piece of wood that is one and 35 hundredths meters long. He wants to cut it into three equal parts how long will each part measure? Now, because we need a precise measure, an estimate will not be a good answer. We can still regroup the dividend as hundredths to solve. We have one and 35 hundredths. We think of it as 135 hundredths divided by three or 135 divided by three. We can just do the long division. 135 divided by three we see how many times the three can fit into the one. It can't, so we're not gonna put the answer here. Can three fit into 13? Yes, four times. So we put the four above the three in 13, and three times four is 12. We subtract it and get a one. It's the five's turn to come down. Three fits into 15 five times. We write it up there, and three times five is 15, and we get a zero remainder. And since this was 135 hundredths divided by three, our quotient is 45 hundredths. And we can check it by rounding this to a compatible number for the three. We can think of 150 hundredths divided by three. That would be 50 hundredths, which is close to 45 hundredths. So our quotient is reasonable. Our compatible numbers need to be as close to the actual numbers as possible. So our estimate will be as close to the actual numbers as possible. We want our estimate to be reasonable. In 1967, Chicago had a record setting snowfall of 584 thousandths meter for two days on January 26 and 27th. In 1979, Chicago had another large snowfall for two days on January 13th and 14th. And the snowfall was 533 thousandths of a meter. And what is the estimated snowfall for one day during each of these years? We think the snowfall was for two days in both years. We can divide the snowfalls by two to know the daily amounts. For 1967, we Think of this as 584 thousandths divided by two. We can use the compatible number 600 and do 600 thousandths divided by two, which would be 300 thousandths, or we could write it like this, and we can remove those trailing zeros and make it three tenths of a meter, couldn't we? In 1979, we can round this to a compatible number of 500 and 500 divided by two is 250. So 500 thousandths divided by two is equal to 250 thousandths. Or we can say 20, uh, 25 hundredths because we can remove that trailing zero, right? We could say 25 hundredths of a meter. Sarah works five days per week. Each week, her paycheck is $462.25. About how much does Sarah earn each workday? We think the word about tells us our answer will be an estimate. We have $462.25 divided by five. We can round this to the compatible number 450. We can think 45 divided by five. So 450 divided by five would be equal to 90. We can say that Sarah makes about $90 each day she works. Make sure when you're doing your estimation, 
and you have a number, a whole number that's less than the divisor, like this 6 is less than the 9, that you rename the dividend as tenths or hundredths first to be able to do it. Our next lesson, 5.4, we're going to do division of decimals by whole numbers with long division. I hope I'll see you there. Have a wonderful day. Bye.